And welcome back to another daily devotion. I'm Pastor Roy here at Woodlawn Christian Church in Lake City, Iowa, and this devotion is for Thursday, January 19th of 2023. And we're going to finish the 11th chapter of the book of Romans today. We've been working our way through Romans, and today we are going to look at verses 25 to 36. And we're still going through this, go back and forth with the Gentiles and the Jews, um, the, the as Israel, as to, you know, who's saved, not saved, they're saved, we're saved, you know, and we're going through this whole thing about whether it's limited atonement or what, what have you. So... The, the, the language is different here today, though, uh, in much of this. Um, so we need to be, be aware of that, that there is different, there, there are conflicting messages that we see in, in Romans and through these the 9, 10, and 11, especially, I think. So let's take a look at 11, or excuse me, chapter 11, verses 25 to 36. Lest you be wise in your own conceits, I want you to understand this mystery, brethren. A hardening has come upon part of Israel until the full number of the Gentiles come in. And so all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the Deliverer will come from Zion. He will banish ungodliness from Jacob. And this will be my covenant with them when I take away their sins. As regards the gospel, they are enemies of God for your sake. But as regards election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been so they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you they will also they also may receive mercy. For God has consigned all men to disobedience, that he may have mercy upon all. O oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments, and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him, that he might be repaid? For from him, and through him, and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. And I apologize for my stumbling a bit there in reading that. Um, some of that's worded a little bit peculiarly in the RSV. Um, sometimes the RSV does do that. Um, Anyway, let's go back to verse 25. Lest you be wise in your own conceits. Remember yesterday there were a couple places. Um, do not boast. Do not become proud. Get that ego out of the way. The ego goes before a fall. Um, and, and this is part of the problem. Again, I've been kind of hammering away at Calvinism and, and Reformed theology. That's part of my problem with that because I see a lot of conceitedness and, 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 and thinking we're, we're in, you're out. See you later, uh, kind of a, a thing. And to me, that's very conceited. Um, and, I, and I dislike that um, because there should be nothing conceited about our interpretation of scripture. And, and if you get someone up there that, that's talking and has an obvious ego um, and is not repentant in their ego, that's somebody I, I pretty much don't listen to them. Uh, I, I pretty much just discount Right away, if I feel that you're coming from a place of, 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 of arrogance. Let's put it that way. All right. Uh, and that's what it's saying. Conceits. Uh, I want you to understand this mystery. That's a mystery. That ought to clue you in <laughs> that we probably aren't going to quite understand what's going on. It's a mystery. Brethren, a hardening has come upon part of Israel until the full number of the Gentiles come in. And so all Israel will be saved, as it is written. The deliverer will come from Zion. Jesus comes from Zion. The root of Jesse, as we talked about before, with the vine, the grafting into the vine, um, the root of Jesse, the deliverer comes from Zion. Jesus was a Jew, as I believe I said yesterday. Remember that always. Don't forget that. If you're going to become anti-Semitic, that's your anti-Jesus. Um, a hardening has come upon Israel in part because some of the Jews did did accept Christ, but there's a hardening there. And the purpose of that hardening is, and again, God didn't make them reject, but he's using that just as he did with Pharaoh, as we talked about in in the story of Exodus. He's using that until the full number of Gentiles come in. So he's hardening Israel to bring in all of the Gentiles. Um, and so all Israel will be saved, as it is written. Now, the thing that's interesting there is when you got full and all, and and earlier uh, or later in verse 32, he says, have mercy upon all. Uh, and in our verses, on, I think it was on Tuesday, 
we talked about their full inclusion of the, of the, of the Jews, the full inclusion. People tend to say, oh, that doesn't mean all, because uh, earlier he was talking about a remnant or a part or what have you. Well, it's peculiar to me that remnant means remnant, but all does not mean all. Why is it that, 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 that you're, we're misunderstanding what he's talking about with this remnant idea? And it seems pretty clear that all is all. That's another argument. Not necessarily I'm making that. That's a universalist argument. I think it has just as much, or perhaps even stronger, credence than an idea for limited atonement. Um, you wrestle with that as you will uh, and try to discern that. Remember, it's a mystery. But in this chapter, we have very much inclusive language, very much language that would lean toward a universalist, meaning all, God saves all in some, in some mysterious fashion. Again, not saying that's my theology by any stretch, but... It's there, uh, and that counters this idea of a remnant, so or this limited atonement, and so we you need to be aware of these things. So I'm, that's my point taken, and I've, I've de gone on about that. Ran ran off, okay. Um, but the deliverer will come from Zion. Um, <clears throat> he will banish ungodliness from Jacob. He'll take away Jacob. The sin of the Jews will be taken away. And this will be my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Um, and, and it goes on in verse 29. He's talking about, for the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. God does not take back what God promises. God makes you a promise. God, God fulfills that promise. We are called to make fulfill our promises to God. And that's where we fall short is because that's what sin is. We're not living up to our promise to God. And none of us does that. Doesn't matter who you are, whether you count yourself among the saved or you count yourself among the lost, all of us fall short. In fact, some of the saved fall shorter than some of the lost at times. And and it, again, ego uh, might want to make you think that I'm so much better, and I've I've not you know I'm not going to fall. You're going to fall. Typically, the people that seem to be thinking that way are the ones that I we often find out are most wrapped up in sin. And as a, you know, as a pastor, sometimes you see some of the things about people after they've died, um, and you learn things about them, and you realize, okay, I always thought this was their life. Oh, I see this other side, the side that they kept hidden. Um, God sees those sides, folks. All right, um, where was I at? Just as they were once disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, or just as you were once disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience. Just as the Gentiles have now, um, because they used to be disobedient to God, they've now received mercy because of the Jewish disobedience. So they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to them, they will also receive mercy. Um, for God has consigned, he's, he's locked up all men to disobedience. All of us are disobedience, it's saying, uh, that he may have mercy upon all. Again, it's, all, it's a very universalist um, statement, that he may have mercy upon all. If he has mercy upon all, that's God's mercy is his redemption, is, is redeeming us. Um, not, again, saying that I ascribe to a universal theology by any means, but it's there. Um, it, it is in the scripture there. Um, so lest you, 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 somewhere between the two is where, where we must be. And again, we need to understand that we don't understand that mystery. I want you to understand this mystery, that you don't understand the mystery. And that's what he's going to get onto next, is the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments. The arrogance is that we would think that we can, that we can discern. Is That's why I have a real problem with end time the theology as well when people are preaching you know that I've got all of the all of this laid out um you're you're pulling things apart or pulling things from here, this part that part and the other part gluing them together and oftentimes you're misinterpreting those parts um such as some of the things that are talking about th those ones being taken well and and when Jesus is talking about those things about being taken um to being taken in, in the Roman world was not a good thing uh, so the people in those days didn't want to be taken because if you got taken by the, by the whatever Romans or whoever, um, usually it didn't go well for you. Um, so the, the, some of that, the, that that verbiage used for some of these end time theologies 
falls flat to me. Um, unsearchable are his judgments and inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Who am I to tell God who and what he can do? Uh, I can't, and neither should you. Um, or who has given a gift to him? The only gift we give to God is our, lo our lives. That would be the only potential gift we could say. But the gifts that God has given to us is our life. Um, he has given, that's the gift he gives to all of us. What we do with our life, whether we're doing it, if we're going to try to repay him in any way, um, which we can't do, uh, but if we're going to attempt to him in, a, in even a small remedial fashion, is how we live our lives. We live our lives in grace and love. The biggest problem that, again, that I have with some of the limiting theology uh, of who God died for is that, it, again, as I've mentioned earlier, it violates the great commandment. The, the, the number one commandment Jesus tells us in Scripture is love. In order to have that, you violated that. God violates that. And you're making God to violate a commandment that he's given to us. God's not going to violate. He's God, if, if God gives you something to do, he can do greater than you. He's not going to do less than you. Okay? Remember that. God is great. We aren't. Um, we're all fallen. So, I think I've rattled enough. I've probably upset more than one or two folks. Um, I apologize for that. You're free to disagree with me, but we, we all, we should try to hash this out. The problem, the, you know, the reality is, again, nobody knows the mind of God. None of us completely understands this. We're working within this mystery. But I do know that Jesus wants you to come to him. He wants you to accept him as your Lord and Savior. That's the one thing that I do know. Um, with that, I'm going to let you go. Tomorrow we start chapter 12, new direction. Have a blessed day, and please, please, please be a blessing to someone today. If these devotions do anything for you at all, if you enjoy them, and even in the remedial fashion, please like and subscribe. We'd love to have you back again, all right? If you want to make a comment, please make a kind comment. Don't hurt, don't hurt Roy's tender feelings. This one's gone kind of long. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.